Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Nathan from InfoGamer. Lately I've been thinking about what direction I want to take my Photon tutorial series, and what I've decided is that as I create multiplayer games, such as our Season 1 project, and I create a specific game mechanic, I'm then going to show you how I created that game mechanic. And then once I show you how to create that game mechanic, I'll show you how to make it work for a multiplayer game. So for this lesson, I thought I would show you how I created the player controls for our Season 1 project. Now remember, if you'd like to participate and contribute to the development of our Season 1 project, make sure that you join our Discord server, which is linked to in the description below. So let's go ahead and hit play in the editor so I can demonstrate these player controls. Once our game connects to the Photon network, I'll then click Battle, which will load us into the multiplayer scene. So at the moment we have this spaceship, which is like our player avatar, and the player controls consist of being able to move the mouse around the screen and having the spaceship look at wherever the mouse is pointing, and also being able to boost forward in the direction that our spaceship is facing. Another important part of these controls is having the camera follow your spaceship wherever it goes. These simple controls are very popular for top-down shooters such as this game and games like Zombs Royale. And here's some gameplay for Zombs Royale. Now you'll first notice that the player object will rotate itself around to always be looking at the position of your mouse. The other thing to notice is that since the player object is a person walking around, you can push any direction, WASD, and the character will walk in that direction. And so I'm now going to show you how to create the basic controls for a top-down shooter. So the first thing that we need to look at is our scene setup. So I'm going to go over to our multiplayer scene so that you can see the different kind of game objects that I have. Now the first thing that you'll need is a camera, which I have right here. And you can just use a camera that's already in your scene. But I've made some slight changes to this camera. The first change that I've made is that I've rotated the camera by 85 degrees in the X direction. I've also centered this camera in the X and Z directions, and I've moved it up by 7 units in the Y direction. The only other change that I've made to this camera object is that I've attached this script, which I've called Camera Follow, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but you're going to want to make sure that you have this script. The next important object that you'll need within your scene is what I've called the Mouse Field. And this object is essentially a 3D plane, which you can create by going to the Create drop-down menu, going to 3D Object, and then selecting Plane. You can then remove the Mesh Filter component and the Mesh Render component. You'll then want to center this object in the X and Z directions, and I've actually moved it down in the Y direction by negative 5. The only other change that I've made to this object is that I've scaled it up in the X and Z directions by 100 units. But I'll go ahead and delete this plane object because I already have my mouse field object. We'll be using this object to detect the position of our mouse in world space. The last important object that you'll need is your player avatar object, which I'll drag into the scene. When making these controls for a solo game, you can have your player avatar start within your scene. But if you're making it for a multiplayer game, then you need to instantiate that object across the network. Now when looking at our player avatar object, you'll need to make sure that you have some sort of collider. In this case, I have a capsule collider, and I've made it so that this object is a trigger. You also need to have a rigid body, and in this case, I've frozen the position in the Y direction, and I've frozen the rotation in the X and Z direction. This will help keep this object on the same Y plane as all the other player objects. The next thing that you'll need for this object is this movement controller script, which we'll be talking about in a little bit. You don't need to worry about the avatar controller because this controls other things that we won't be covering in this tutorial. You also don't need to worry about the photon view or the photon transform view because we'll talk about these in the next lesson on making the movement controls multiplayer. Now the last thing that you'll need for your player avatar object are some child objects. The first one is the reticle. This is just an empty game object that we'll be using for the transform of the mouse position. The next important object that you'll need is what I've called the camera target. 
this is an empty game object which I've set seven units above my player avatar and we're going to be using this object's transform to reposition the camera so that it'll follow our spaceship. And the last thing that you'll need is some sort of particle effect which I've placed at the back of our spaceship for the booster. Some of these other objects which I haven't mentioned are like the basic weapon object which you don't need to worry about in this tutorial. I also have a model for my spaceship which is important but that's kind of a given. And then I have this parent player object which holds all the visual elements of my spaceship. So now let's get into the scripting of our player's movement and we'll start with the camera follow script. This script is pretty simple. The first thing that we need is this variable which is a public transform called target. Then all we have is this update function where we're checking to see if the target does not equal null. This will help prevent us from receiving any errors if the target is null. Then inside the if statement we have transform.position equals vector3.lerp and we're lerping from the current position to the new target position. And I've set the interval to 3. Now that's really all we need for our camera follow script. Now let's go over to our movement controller script. Now the first thing that we'll talk about in this script is moving the spaceship forward. And these are the variables that you'll need for this mechanic. The first one is a public float, which I've called boost force. The next one is a private rigid body, which I've called my RB. The next one is a public particle system, which I've called booster. And the last one is a private bool, which I've called is boosting. And I've set it equal to false. The first thing that we're going to do is set our rigid body variable. So in the start function, I have this line, which is my RB equals get component rigid body. Once we have this, we can go down to the function I've created called movement. Inside this function, I am checking for player input. In this case, I'm using the W key. If the player is pressing down the W key, then we want to add force to our rigid body. So I have my RB dot add relative force. And then inside parentheses, I have vector three dot forward times boost force times time dot delta time. The next thing that we're doing inside this if statement is we're setting is boosting equal to true. And the last thing that we do inside our movement function is we have this else statement. So if the player is not pressing down the W key, then we're setting is boosting equal to false. Now what we could do is we could add an additional condition, but in order to do that, we need to include the first condition. And so I'm going to check to see if not input dot get key key code W. So if we're not pressing the W key, then I also want to check to see if is boosting is true. So if both of these conditions are true, we will then set is boosting equal to false, which will make it so that we only execute this once per time. Now what we need to do is we need to call our movement function. And since this function deals with physics, we need to call it within the fixed update function. Now within this function, I have if pv dot is mine equals true, then I'm calling my movement function. But since we're not worrying about networking, you can actually just leave out this if statement and just call our movement function. Now the next thing that we're going to talk about is our booster particle effects. And for this, I have a function called boosters. Now inside this function, I have some networking, but I'll try to comment out what you don't need for this tutorial and just talk about the controls themselves. The first thing within this function that we have is an if statement where we're checking to see if is boosting equals true. We're also checking to see if our booster particle effect is not playing its particles. If we're not playing our particle effect, but we want to be playing it, then I'm going to set booster.play. Now for this lesson, we don't need to worry about any of the stuff within the next if statement where we're checking to see if pv.isMine equals true. Now the next thing that we need to do is make a condition for turning off our booster particle effect. So I have this if statement where I'm checking to see if isBoosting equals false. If it equals false and our booster particle effect is playing, then I want to call booster.stop. And once again, we don't need to worry about this if statement. Once we have this, we can then call our boosters function, which I am calling within our update function. 
The last thing that we'll talk about in this script is getting the rotation of the spaceship and getting the spaceship to look at wherever the mouse is pointing. For this game mechanic, we'll need these variables. The first one is a public camera, which I've called my camera. The next one I have is a public transform, which is called reticle. This will be for that empty game object, which we have as a child to our player avatar. And the last one is a public transform, which I've called camera target. The first thing that we need to do is we need to set the parent of our reticle to null. So in the start function, I have reticle.parent equals null. Once we have this, we can then start coding for the rotation of our spaceship. And to do this, I have a function which I've called PC look at mouse. The PC stands for personal computer. So if you're playing this game on a computer where you have a mouse and keyboard, the controls are going to be different than if you were playing on a mobile device. We'll be creating the controls for a mobile device in the near future, and once we do, we'll show you how we did it. Inside this function, we're really just doing a basic raycast with the mouse position. And so I'm first creating a raycast hit, which is called hit, and then I'm creating a ray, which I've called ray, and I'm setting it equal to my camera dot screen point to ray and in parentheses I'm passing in the input dot mouse position. Once we create this ray we then want to cast it and so I have this if statement where I'm calling physics dot raycast I'm passing in ray and I'm outputting the hit. Inside this if statement I have another if statement where we're checking to see if the hit dot transform equals this transform. If it equals this transform then we want to return. This basically means that our mouse position is over top of our spaceship, and if it's over top of our spaceship, then we don't want to do anything. If we're not pointing at our own spaceship, then we're going to be pointing at a different object, most likely our mouse field object. In this case, we then want to reposition our reticle object to the position of our mouse. So I have reticle.position equals new vector 3. For the x value, I'm passing in hit.point.x. For the y, I'm passing in 0, and for the z, I'm passing in hit.point.z. After we set the position of our reticle, we then want to rotate our spaceship to look at the reticle. So I'm calling transform.lookat, and I'm passing in reticle. Once we've created this function, we then want to call it, and I'm calling it within our update function right here. Now you don't have to worry about this if statement where we're checking to see if pv.isMine equals false and you don't have to worry about this return line. We'll talk about this in the next video. Once you have your camera follow script and your movement controller, you then want to make sure that you save these scripts, and then we'll go back to Unity. Inside Unity, you want to make sure that your camera follow script is attached to a camera game object, and for the target variable, you can set that to the camera target game object, which is a child to your player avatar. This camera target game object is positioned above your spaceship and is rotated down to look at the spaceship. For the movement controller script, you want to make sure that you attach it to your player avatar game object. And for a solo game, you can just leave your player avatar within the scene. For the boost force variable, you can play around with this as much as you want. For me, I'm probably going to just set it to something like 25. For the booster variable, you want to set that to your booster particle effect, which mine is called spray2. Now you don't need to worry about this warp buffer variable. This is a variable used for a different game mechanic. For the my camera variable, you can just set that to the camera in your scene that has the camera follow script. If your player avatar is a prefab that you're spawning into your scene, then you're going to need to set that variable using code. But for solo play, you can just have the player avatar start in your scene, and then you can set the my camera variable to the camera that's in your scene. For the reticle variable, you can just set that to the child game object, which is called reticle. And for the camera target variable, you can set that to the child game object, which is called camera target. Now, I believe this is everything that you'll need for the movement controller of this top-down shooter. Now, I'd like to play through the game again so that you can see what this mechanic should look like. So here I have my game playing, and there is one more thing that we need to do. We need to set a visual reticle. At the moment, our reticle game object doesn't have any visual elements to it. And the reason why is because my camera is being shot in a perspective mode, which means that where my raycast intersects with the mouse field 
is actually further out than where my mouse is actually pointing. If my camera were shooting in an orthographic view, then there wouldn't be any angle of projection, which means that wherever my mouse is pointing is where also the intersection will be. And so if that's the case, then we could just throw a 2D sprite onto our reticle object. But for a perspective mode, we need to think about it in a different way. And so what I've done is I've created this script here, which is called main menu controller. And in this script, I have a public texture 2D variable called text 2D. And then I have this void function called set cursor. Inside this function, I create a new cursor mode called mode, and I set it equal to cursor mode dot force software. I then have two int variables. One is called xbot and one is called yspot. And I set both of them equal to text 2D dot width and then text 2D dot height. And I divide both of them by two. This will get the center position of our cursor because by default, the hotspot of your cursor is in the top left corner. But for our reticle, we want that hotspot to be in the center. I then create a vector2 variable called hotspot and I set it equal to new vector2 xspot and yspot. I then use cursor.setCursor to set the texture2d and the hotspot and then the mode. You then want to call this function within your start function. Once you have this, you can then save this script and go back to Unity. This script I have attached to an empty game object called menu controller. It's attached right here. And you need to set the texture 2D to a sprite that you've dragged into your project window, which I have right here. Once you've done this, your game will replace the default arrow cursor with your reticle within the game view. Now we can go ahead and hit battle and I'll demonstrate the game mechanic again. So we have our spaceship and our spaceship rotates to look at wherever our mouse is pointing. And then if I press the W key, you can see that our boosters instantly start up and we start moving forward. Now, if I wanted to, I could play around with the boost force variable to make my spaceship more responsive or less responsive. And there we go. So that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to create basic controls for a top-down shooter. Now, of course, if you were making a different kind of top-down shooter, like Zom's Royale, where you have a person that's actually walking around instead of a spaceship that's flying, then you're going to want to customize some of these controls so that you can push any direction, WASD, and have your character walk in that direction. For our game at the moment, since we just have spaceships that fly forward, we are then just adding force in the forward direction. If you have something else that walks, then you might want to consider using something other than a rigid body, maybe the character controller that Unity provides right here. But of course, if you change this, then you'll also need to customize the code that we've covered in this video. Now, I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I hope everything made sense. If you have any questions, make sure that you leave them in the comments below. Also, make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date whenever we publish new videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.